Hi! Today I want you guys to think a little bit about how in the world do we come to the idea of the atom. Now we've just talked about, or we've been studying a little bit about elements and substances and compounds and mixtures and solutions, but how did we get to think about the atom? Well the fact is, in the very early stages of the development of science, ancient Greeks and ancient Indians both came with philosophies that described the universe and the nature of matter. And there were two competing ideas. The idea of continuous matter and the idea of discontinuous matter. What do those mean? Continuous matter means that matter, what makes up the stuff of the universe, could be infinitely divisible, that it was always the same, and as you cut into smaller and smaller pieces, those pieces could be cut into even smaller pieces that had the same characteristics. And that was supported by the likes of Greek philosophers uh, such as Aristotle. This continuous theory of matter instead said that at some point when you started cutting matter it got to a, a point that was so small that it could no longer be broken down into smaller bits. And that was called atomos. Atomos means indivisible. It comes from the Greek a for not, all right? And tomos, which means cuttable, to be able to cut something. So not cuttable, or in common English, indivisible. Now, this theory, the discontinuous theory of matter, was supported by the likes of uh, Democritus and Leucippus. Now, in Greek society, you didn't do experiments to prove a theory. What you did is you had debates. And Aristotle and his camp of thinkers were much stronger debaters than uh, Democritus and Leucippus. And therefore, the idea of matter being discontinuous, matter becoming atomos, was left behind and kind of forgotten for almost 2,500 years. In the meantime, what happened was that we had some really strange and old ideas about matter. For example, if you let a piece of meat sit around for a couple of days, you'd notice the presence of maggots developing after a couple of days. And I know we don't like to think about things like maggots very much, but this was something that people observed. It was kind of experimental in the sense that they could see it, they could repeat it, and it always seemed to happen. What does that mean? It meant that matter could be created, perhaps. Now, we know a little bit better than that, but this was something that was observed. Similarly, if you burned a piece of wood, and you had the mass of the wood before, and then you took the mass of the ashes, it was much lighter. And it seemed to indicate that matter could be also destroyed, that matter could disappear. Well, is this true? We know from our perspective here in the 21st century that that is not so. That in fact matter remains constant. But how do we get there? Well, we owe thanks to Antoine, Lovasi Antoine Lavoisier. Antoine Lavoisier was the father of modern chemistry. He decided that he, like Newton did for physics, he was going to make a revolution in chemistry and make it into a modern science, one science that was numerical, that you could do predictions, that you could calculate. And so he developed a whole experimental style in which he emphasized being very careful about your measurements and repeating your measurements. In addition, he also did quantitative analysis. He was making sure that every measure that he had had actual numbers, not just observations, not just colors or does it bubble, but this was 5 grams, 20 grams, or anything like that. Now, the next thing that he did was he made sure that his um, results were reproducible, that over and over and over again he was getting the same results and not that it was just a fluke. That is very important in science and in fact nowadays theories are accepted this way. And finally, he 
published his conclusions and his message so other people could actually see what he was doing. So Lavoisier, by publishing his conclusions, allowed other people to be able to observe them, criticize them, but also learn and share from those discoveries to make their own discoveries. This is one of the reasons why we make you guys do lab reports. It's so we can see how strong your analytical methods are and so you can learn that this is a key role of um, science and doing science. So Lavoisier developed many different apparatus to make his measurements to be very careful and here is an, just a small illustration of some of the many different things that he created. And he came up with this law of conservation of matter. But how did he do that? Well, he was interested in burning uh, metals and he observed that when he burned metals they gained mass. But similarly, when he burned pieces of wood or other organic material, they seemed to get lighter. And so he didn't know why this was so. What he did is he put these objects, these substances, in closed containers with enough air and he used a very strong magnifying glass to ignite them. And when they burned, he saw that they completely were consumed. But instead of opening the container, he took the mass of the container before he burned it and after he burned it, and he noticed that the mass remained unchanged. Now, I have a little question for you. How about this? If I take the mass of a piece of wood initially, and I put it then in a container with enough oxygen, and I close the container, and I use my magnifying glass to burn it, and then take the mass of the smoke, the water vapor, and the ashes in the container, is that mass going to be more or less than the mass, the initial mass of the piece of wood? So if I add the smoke, the water vapor, and the ashes, is that more, less, or equal to the mass of the piece of wood? Take a little note, make sure you write that down because I will ask you about that and to show me your answer next time. Now, from the results that he got from metals, burning metals and burning wood, he found out that in fact the total mass of all substances in a chemical or physical system remain constant throughout the process. All right. So basically, what you had, the mass that you had initially, has to equal the total mass at the end. Now, here I have a drawing of a small molecule, so a model of a molecule. What molecule is this? I hope that you can recognize it as water, right? And what do you know about water? What is it composed of? Well, it's composed of one atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen. We know this from our 21st century perspective, but before that, we didn't know. We, in fact, knew that water had a constant ratio, a certain amount of hydrogen always, a certain mass of hydrogen always combined with a certain mass of oxygen. All right? And this was true always and everywhere, no matter where that water had come from. Once it was pure water, you were always going to get those same results. And this was emphasized and expanded as a, as a law by another Frenchman by the name of Joseph Prost, and he came up with the law of definite proportions. The mass ratio of the elements in a given compound is constant. Or in other words, each compound has a specific and constant composition. This together with Lavoisier's ideas are fundamental in, develop in the development of the first atomic theory and the first modern atomic theory which was done by John Dalton. And we will come and talk about Joel da John Dalton next time uh, to carry on learning about the atom. Thank you.